Welcome to the naming ceremony of Saga's newest cruise ship, the Spirit of Adventure. We're broadcasting live from Portsmouth, a city that was founded almost a millennium ago, and one which has been home to the Royal Navy for centuries. This place has witnessed many magical maritime moments, and today is no exception, because we will be making history. This is the first time ever a cruise ship has been named here. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this very special day, whether you're online or here in person. I truly hope you're as excited to be here as I am today. And this day has been a long time coming for Saga and their loyal customers. But you know what? I have a feeling we're going to prove that it's been worth the wait. Today, I'll be joined by special guests, including Commodore Inga Kennedy, the ship's godmother. Commodore Kennedy has been given this honor by Saga because she is a nurse and former head of the Royal Navy Medical Service. Over the past 18 months, medical professionals everywhere have come together to treat and support people throughout the pandemic. It's thanks to them and many others we can finally cruise and travel again. A big thank you from all of us here today. And it's almost two years ago to the day I was at the naming ceremony for the Spirit of Discovery, the Spirit of Adventure's big sister. The Duchess of Cornwall is Discovery's godmother and also happens to be Commodore-in-Chief of the Royal Navy Medical Service. It's a wonderful link to have these two special godmothers united. In time-honored tradition, our godmother will be responsible for pressing this very button to release our bottle of bubbles. It's been specially blended for us by Balfour Hush Heath, a stunning vineyard not too far away from here. And I can assure you, I'm looking forward to having a sip of it later. But before we start proceedings, I'd like to introduce you to our star of the show, the spirit of adventure. Having been on board the ship, I can honestly say she really is as beautiful on the inside as she looks on the outside. However, there's a man who knows her much better than I do and what this day means for Saga. I'd like to welcome CEO of Saga Travel, Nick Stays. Hi, Nick. Hi. How are you feeling right now to finally get to this moment and what does it mean for Saga? Well, I hadn't quite realised I was going to have a lump in my throat at this moment in time, which isn't... <laughs> 
the best time to have one. But I'm just enormously proud. I'm really proud, actually, of our incredible crew. Uh, I'm Woo! really... I, I, I mean, you may not know, they are hand-selected from 49 different countries. They're the finest crew in the world, and we're so lucky to have them. We've got wonderful colleagues here today as well who have overcome unbelievable obstacles over the last 16 months, and they've come through it, and we're here. And the sun is shining. Wow. It is. Isn't that Fortunately, amazing? not on us because it would be very hot if it, it was. But I referred to the spirit of discovery and the naming ceremony. I mean, how does this ship differ from her big sister? So they're sisters, but they're not twins. Uh, so please don't ask me which one I prefer because <laughs> I will offend a whole load of people if you do that. Um, I think they are both spectacular. This one has different restaurants, different themed restaurants. So we dined last night in a beautiful Nepalese restaurant, for example. They both have the standard of exceptional experiences every day. They are both stunning inside. Beautiful artworks from around Britain, British artists, beautiful design of the ship as well. But they, at their heart, it's really quality, quality, quality. And I've heard every single bedroom is slightly different. Is that true? Well, and with a balcony. And I think there's a wonderful competition we could run. You know, there are 554 cabins and close to that number of differences within each cabin. So I think we should put a challenge out to our customers, to our guests. Can you go on 554 cruises and experience every cabin? Well, I think that sounds like a brilliant challenge. And I now have a final challenging question for you. If you have to say what your favorite feature is of this ship, because I know you were on board last night, what is that one feature? Well, I don't know if you can put it down to a feature, because, but I can put it down to people. And that is the difference, is the kindness and the community of our crew. They are so special. I mean, the hardware is beautiful. The ship is stunning. It's elegant and it's beautiful. But the most beautiful thing are our crew. They Wonder really are. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Nick. You've just heard Nick mention the ship's crew. Let's meet a few of those special people who I know you call your family on board. My name's Kim Tanner. I'm captain of Spirit of Adventure, Britain's newest cruise ship. She is so manoeuvrable with two lovely, big, powerful azipods on the uh, aft end, combined with a 6,000 horsepower of bow thrusters as well. So it means uh, for us that it opens up a lot of gateways to smaller ports that we maybe couldn't get our previous ships into. The ship is definitely bigger than it needs to be for 999 people, and that's because we want to keep that boutique feel. We want everyone to have plenty of their own space. The cabins are nice and big. Everybody has their own balcony. The moment that first guest walks on board is going to be a very special feeling for everybody, for sure. We're already creating that feeling by experiencing all the venues ourselves. So the crew are all going out to our speciality dining rooms, for example, experiencing what the guests will experience and also feeding back anything they think that might be able to be done better. So yeah, we're really looking forward to getting back out to sea where we belong. I like Spirit of Adventure because it's sort of a personal approach. We, we like to talk to our guests and we check if, uh, how are they experiencing. So we meet their standards and if not surpass it. That's what, uh, what I look forward to, to see them. They're satisfied and wanting to come back. So that's what we, what we want as a company. It's uh, exciting to see them back. And also for those first timers, it's just exciting to fill this up with passengers. Just putting smiles on their faces to see them uh, appreciate what I do. I'm now joined by Britain's Got Talent winner and opera singer Paul Potts, who will be entertaining guests on board this ship at the end of its inaugural cruise. Paul, thank you for joining us. I mean, you're almost looking as shiny as the ship, which is fantastic. <laughs> How does it feel for you to be able to finally be performing again? Well, the last 16 months have been challenging for many people in the performance industry, and um, it, it always feels like part of it's been cut off. Um, but it's great to be starting to perform again, and I'm really looking forward to it. And what are the songs that you can't wait to sing to entertain the audience on board? Well, 
This year is the 100th anniversary of the birth of Mario Lanza, so there will be some of his standards I, I will be performing, amongst many others that, that I've recorded over the years. Good. And you are going to give a very special performance for us at the end of, at the end of this ceremony, but I have to confess that in the run-up to this, I was watching a film about your life, which I believe you refer to as the opera of your life, and it was incredibly heartwarming and inspiring. But the thing that concerned me slightly is this battle that you have with your nerves. Do you still get nervous before each performance? I think if you don't get any nerves, then it means that what you do doesn't mean anything to you anymore. I remember when I was working at Carphone Warehouse, if I didn't, if I didn't sell one contract that away from my target it was kind of ah well there's always tomorrow it's a bit different when you're a performer every every performance means something something tell me about it well thank you very much and i do wish you well later on can't wait to hear it thank you. we've already met a few of the crew but now let me introduce you to the executive chef and the crew's director the spirit of adventure is as it is a new build ship, it's a fantastic new project. It makes it special because of the culinary outlets from my perspective, where we can provide a very wide profile of flavors to our guests and different cuisines. It's a fantastic project, to be honest. That's why I think it's very special. Guests are coming for two reasons on a ship. One is traveling to see the destination, and the other one is to experience new flavors. And for us as a culinary team on this ship or in this company, it's very special that we have a freedom to create dishes as we like to. Going around the world with the ship and um, learning about new ingredients and also new dishes, which we can then implement on the menu for our guests to, to experience. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Spirit of Adventure. My goodness me, it's great to be back. Hi, my name is Jo Bose. Uh, many of our guests call me Jobo, and I'm the cruise director on board, which basically means I organise all of the entertainment and the fun stuff. We have oodles of activities, and I'm known by our guests for saying oodles of activities. So whether it is playing bridge, enjoying a, a lecture, we have uh, plenty of bands on board, so if you want the opportunity to get up and dance until the wee small hours, you can do that. So we can accommodate many tastes on board. Whether you are young of spirit and you want to party, you can have the opportunity to do that on board. And if you want to relax, read a book, let the world pass by you, you can find quiet places to just relax and enjoy your cruise as well. So of course, here on board, we're getting ready for this inaugural cruise, which is such an exciting moment. And to come back on board, to walk around the ship, to see those beautiful, smiling faces, everybody is just so eager to see our guests come up that gangway. I could cry now talking about it. We just can't wait to see them. I think I almost have that lump in my throat now that Nick was referring to earlier. And it's really genuine because I've been talking to so many crew this morning and they really cannot wait to see you all again and set sail. I'm now honored to be joined by Commodore Inga Kennedy, a nurse by trade and former head of the Royal Navy Medical Service. What? <laughs> You're very, very popular with your ship already, Inga. This is wonderful. And you deserve it as someone who has given their career to looking after and caring for other people. How do you feel about the medical services provided by this country over the past 18 months? Heidi, thank you. We should be collectively immensely proud, whether you were part of the NHS, whether you were part of the armed forces, or all of these hundreds of volunteers across the country who have helped support this country and its fight against the pandemic. Truly proud of them all. That's wonderful. So when you were asked to be godmother of this ship, I mean, it's quite a different role. I mean, how did you feel about that? It's a very different role, and it took me completely by surprise. But I have to say, what a surprise. It's been utterly wonderful. And then reflecting on that invitation, looking at the links, the challenges of this country, the work of healthcare professionals, and of course, the Commandant in Chief of the Royal Navy Medical Service, Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall. It's been wonderful. 
And it's fantastic. And the Duchess of Cornwall is Godmother of Discovery. Have you met her? I have indeed. I've met her on a number of occasions. And of course, the last time was only a few weeks ago where I had an audience with Her Royal Highness. We talked about what the Royal Navy Medical Person Naval Service personnel have been doing. She's extremely proud of what they're doing. But, but by exception, what she wants to do is meet them in person. She can't wait to thank them herself. Well, it sounds to me like you should host an afternoon tea on one of your respective ships for all of those people. I think that would be a wonderful idea. Yeah. Well, now, thinking of the ship, Inga, I know you were on board last night. How was it for you? Exceptional. I absolutely loved it. My husband and I joined yesterday. All these people have been utterly <laughs> wonderful. They, they made us so welcome. And I have to say, luxurious is an understatement. And it has some fantastic restaurants. Where did you dine whilst you were staying? Well, yesterday we had lunch in the Amalfi restaurant. And of course, that means a lot to me. One of my favorites is Italian, having spent two years working out there. And then last night, something new for me, it was Nepalese. Absolutely wonderful. But again, it's thanks to all of these wonderful people who made it very special for us. Good. And, and I know, Inga, you've recently retired. Ship's called Adventure. What adventures do you have planned? Well, um, my husband and I have moved to Somerset, so we've got a wonderful house down there and we're just beginning to learn to live in, in the countryside, perhaps with a slightly lower pace of life. But of course, I still aim to do some part-time work. I'm very passionate about healthcare. I'm very passionate about what the NHS does. And I will continue to support, for example, Portsmouth Trust here, um, just supporting them in the way of improving their services for their patients. Wonderful. Inga, thank you very much. We're getting close to the moment we've all been waiting for, and that is the bottle smash. And this bottle has been on an adventure all of its own to get here today. Richard Balfour Lynn, co-founder of the Balfour Winery on the Hush Heath Estate. And we're really proud to be providing this bottle of sparkling wine to christen Saga's new booty cruise ship, the Spirit of Adventure. And in that Spirit of Adventure, this bottle is going on a journey of its own. The tradition of smashing a bottle in the side of the ship has its origin in the 15th century. A representative of the king would drink a goblet of wine, sprinkle some of the wine on the deck for good luck, and then throw the goblet overboard. By the 18th century, the Royal Navy was launching so many new ships that throwing a silver goblet overboard was getting very expensive. So they started using bottles instead but there were still more changes. The red wine that was used would have looked a bit like blood, not quite the look for an elegant celebration. So at the turn of the last century, Champagne, the aristocrat of wines, was introduced. Other types of alcohol, such as whiskey and Madeira, have been used to launch ships around the world. During Prohibition, seawater was placed in the bottle. But back to the aristocrat, which brings us to Saga's Spirit of Adventure, one of the world's most beautiful cruise ships, where only the best will do. And there it is, the bottle of Balfour sparkling wine. I'd like to thank everyone who took part in our virtual bottle relay, many of whom are here today. But it's now, without further ado, I'd like to start the official naming and blessing of this ship. Could I please welcome back to the stage CEO of Saga Travel, Nick Stace. Thank you very much, Heidi. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a day that we will all remember for a very long time to come. It's a historic day for Portsmouth, being the first time Portsmouth has hosted a naming ceremony for a cruise ship. Of course, it's a historic day for our nation. 
uh, where Freedom Day has arrived at last and the hopes of our nation rest upon this moment. And it's also a moment of extreme pride, as I mentioned earlier, for what we've achieved with the spirit of adventure and the fact that it is beautiful, it's boutique, it's luxury, it's affordable, but fundamentally it is safe. We have created an environment where you can see the world and you can see it and be the safest possible place in the world. It's also an incredibly emotional day for us. As you could tell earlier, I nearly lost it and I might do in a moment. It's emotional for our crew who have spent so long away but have come back and that's just fantastic. It's emotional for our colleagues who have overcome a lot of difficulties over the last 16 months and have come through stronger and still smiling. And it's emotional for our customers who are loyal, understanding, and actually can't wait to come on board with us. So the next few minutes are gonna be very special for all of us. There's gonna be a few short speeches, a blessing, and then the traditional bottle smash. So on behalf of the people of Portsmouth, we will have in a moment, Councillor Vernon Jackson, who will say a few words. And then uh, our very own captain, Captain Kim Tanner, who I actually think has probably the best job in the cruise world that you could possibly have uh, with this ship. Uh, then we will have a blessing from the Reverend Dr. Kane, uh, who is uh, the Dean of Portsmouth. And then finally, to the woman who we owe so much as a nation to, and who has been so fantastic in agreeing to be our godmother, to Commodore Kennedy. Thank you for everything that you have done for our nation over the last 16 months and before that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. I'd now like to welcome Portsmouth Council leader, Gerald Vernon Jackson, CBE, to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the city of Portsmouth, welcome to Saga, welcome to this wonderful new ship. Uh, the port here is, is owned and run by the city council and we've invested a huge amount in trying to make it right for cruise companies to come here, invested in the berth to make sure it's a really great place for Saga, for this great ship, but for other cruise companies as well. And it's paying off, we're having more and more cruise companies come here. So thank you to all the team at the port who've worked so hard to make this possible. It's been brilliant work. And it's great that Saga are here with this wonderful ship for people to be able to come and start or finish their cruises here, uh, to be able to see the city, but also um, for, for other times. So Portsmouth is a great place. A birthplace of Charles Dickens. You can almost see his birthplace uh, on the other side of the ship. A birthplace of Isambard King and Brunel. The home of the uh, historic... Uh, the historic naval base uh, with HMS Victory, uh, the HMS Warrior, the Mary Rose, uh, as well as the Spinnaker Tower and the D-Day story. So it's great to welcome um, Saga here. It's great to welcome this wonderful ship here. It's great that this is the first naming ceremony of a cruise ship here in Portsmouth that we've ever done. Let's hope it's the first of many, and let's wish all the crew and all the people working on the shore and all the passengers a wonderful, wonderful time. Thank you very much. Thank, thank. <laughs> the captain seems to be very popular, and thank you, Gerald, for making us so welcome. <laughs> there we now have the Spirit of Adventures captain, Kim Tanner, who seems to be yeah, very popular. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Heidi. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ship's company. <laughs> Good afternoon. Being the captain of this spectacular ship is a huge honour, and to be the first captain of a new ship is particularly special, a real milestone in one's career. That is made even more so to be in command of the first cruise ship to be named here in Portsmouth, a city with such a long and proud naval history. When I manoeuvred Spirit of Adventure into Tilbury in October last year, having delivered her from the Meyerwerft shipyard in Germany, I don't think any of us thought it would take this long until we would be able to welcome guests and properly set sail. The pandemic has, of course, added another layer of challenge to that already significant hurdle of getting a brand new ship from the builder's yard to where we are now and into service. My 525 crew here behind me are already and itching to get back out to sea again. And I personally can't wait to get sailing a week today when we will welcome our guests on board for our inaugural British Isles cruise. 
Although if the weather continues like this, we could always sell it as a Caribbean cruise. I'm terrifically proud to be standing here today at last for the official naming of this stunning ship on a fittingly stunning day. Thank you so much, Captain. <laughs> and following in his footsteps, we have the Dean of Portsmouth, the very Reverend Dr. Anthony Kane. I'm delighted to be here on this ver very special day in order to ask for God's blessing on Spirit of Adventure and all who serve in her. We pray that she may sail under God's good providence and protection, and that there may always be people well qualified to offer both their work and their skill to sustain her and all who travel in her for recuperation, relaxation, and adventure. A reading from Psalm 107. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. Then they cried to the Lord, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad, because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. And now for the blessing of Spirit of Adventure. O Lord God Almighty, who blesses all who put their trust in you, bless, we pray, this cruise ship Spirit of Adventure and all who serve and sail in her. May good success and your protection be with them always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Portsmouth Cathedral, known as the Cathedral of the Sea, there's a prayer we pray every day, which fits well with today's occasion. Creator and Father of all, we pray for those who go down to the sea in ships and serve upon the waters of the world. Bless them and all who minister to their needs, that they may put their trust in thee and find in thee a strong anchor for their hopes and so be filled with thy peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a final prayer of blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and this ship and remain with you forever. Amen. That was wonderful, thank you. And now, the spirit of adventure's godmother, Commodore Inga Kennedy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a huge honor to be sharing this day with you as spirit of adventure's godmother. In taking on this role for such a spectacular cruise ship, I'm not only proud as an individual, but I feel I'm representing all those healthcare professionals across the NHS and the armed forces who have supported this country's fight against COVID-19. I'd like to pay special tribute to the Royal Navy Medical Service and to the team who I was working with in Navy Command Headquarters here in Portsmouth, who have worked above and beyond during some very challenging times. 12 months ago, I lost a good friend and a colleague to cancer. I'd especially like to thank Saga for their very kind donation to Kidney Cancer UK in memory of Angela. Her husband, Neil, is currently head of the Naval Nursing Service. Of course, when I was invited to be the godmother, 
there was a mixed response from my family and friends and my colleagues. There were those who said, Saga, it's for the over 50s, surely not. Then there were those who offered, but 50 is the new 30, how exciting. I'm certainly the latter. And now it's time for me to create some new memories. This country has suffered a lot over the last 18 months. And despite not being out of this yet, people need to look forward to better times. Saga and the spirit of adventure is ready to offer people those long waited for holidays in safe and luxurious surroundings. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I name this ship Spirit of Adventure. <laughs> May God bless her and all who sail in her. Gentlemen, please be standing for the national anthem.